Welcome back to another open sources video. Today I want to show you Langton's Ant in Julia, how to program it. First of all, I will explain what Langton's Ant is about. So it is a cellular automaton. And you have a red ant here and you have a grid which will be, well, which will be bigger later and in theory it's endless. And um, there are only basically two rules. So when the end is on the white cell, it it rotates clockwise, then uh, it moves forward and inverts the cell, uh, the last square basically. So do it again, and now we move to there and then to there. Uh, same position as our starting position, but these four squares are now black. And now on the on the black square we move anti-clockwise and move forward and invert the same as well. So that's what we want to program today. And we need several packages for it. Uh, colors image view might be helpful and I will explain this one later or why I need it. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, um, so we have our main function. Let's open up a terminal using UIs again and we define our whiz. So let's make it small first. We have the position, and I will use. So first of all, I will use the midpoint here, and I will also use imaginary numbers for it to define our two D two D grid, and we have. Uh, the direction so it will look up so in the imaginary component um, so one in the imaginary component so you can just write im for imaginary in Julia and then we define our image which will be um, white at the beginning Then we want to add the color. So I will just store whether it's white or whether it's black. And it's the same dimensions. And everything is white in the beginning. And I we should Set the, the ends to the midpoint or to the end position and oh, to make it red. So it will be just a red pixel and not a beautiful end as before. Okay, um, so this is now our imaginary component and this is our real compon component. And now this is basically um, just copy pasted from a discourse chat and a discourse post I found um, because I want to don't save any images, just update them. And um, this seems to be the fastest way to to update image so this is basically yeah getting the you can also do uh, I think it's im show to to show the image and this is basically the the return of that we can get the the canvas 
and yeah, I think when we run this, it should already. So now a small window opens, which should be filled white with a red dot, and we can fill it. So we can basically have a zoomed in version. We can also zoom, which will not work later, unfortunately, but um, yeah. And yeah, you can just ignore this output. And yeah, so what I have done before is that I sleep for si five seconds so that the window can open and I can set set it to full screen before it continues. So maybe have a number of how many steps here yeah, should be. I should have a default value. And so now basically check which color we are on, which will be and position. Oop. And then so if it's so maybe we should explain it in here. So I want that we have um, direction is one and then we can if we if we have um, our look is oh, I think I called it looks as one imaginary as well and when we multiply them together we basically move one into the left direction which means if we look up and our direction um, this is basically anti-clockwise so that we move left and if we have that time steer we oh, we look down and then we look right and then we look up. So the idea is if it's black we um, we have this direction and if it's white so we, we want to have minus one and you can just write an if statement for it or you can try write it like this. I don't know which will be fast in the end. And then we multiply it and we need to invert the color later and change the color the color and set the The color of the should change this here as well. And if it's white, then color is one. And if it's black, color is zero. So that should work. And then we have to update the end position. And normally I would just write it like this, but we want to have the up component is um, the positive imaginary component. So this will not work because positive is down in the y direction. And so we can have to write it like this. And then we um, set the 
let red at the new position. Do some sleep. And then, um, so if we do this, the image will not update. So we can use our weird dictionary from before. Take the zoom region or probably something else as well. We just need to change something or not really change. Here we set it to the um, to the same as before. This will just trigger an update. So I think we can also push a new image to it, but I think that will because the image is bigger than the view of the of the zoom region. This is uh, better for memory. And yeah, let's have a look. Okay, um, we move out of the image at one point. So Yeah, at this point we move out, we can't set the... we are out of bounds. And we probably want to have it a bit slower. I just wanted to have the 20,000 for later. Um, so that's what we have seen before, moving left the first time. And so on. And yeah, let's make it fast and bigger now. This should probably work. Okay, that's what I meant. It's you have to have this sleep from before um, because otherwise you just update the zoom region from before and if you if you change the zoom region in between um, that's not really working quite well so um, and now it's opening on the second monitor um, which means I need a little, little bit more time to Open that and now it should be fine. Yeah, and now you can see the aunt running all over the grid. And then, as you've seen, there are only those two simple rules, but it looks quite chaotic. So um, you might wonder what will happen in the long run. And there you can see it. It just moves in one direction and does the same steps over and over again. And it's actually 100, it's a 104 step loop. It's just going will just stay like this forever because here no it's all white pixels so there will be no change in it and you can of course also stop that one um, you should probably just stop if this one is bigger than the height and or or it should be between one and the height and this one should be between one and the width and but I, I don't care about that here and uh, the next thing which might be interesting is that we have I don't know maybe some black pixels in the beginning. So and set 
image to black. Okay, maybe we need five, six hundred, maybe, because at the beginning it will look the same. So I don't know whether you see any difference now. But um, might be quite can be interesting to set your own environment at the beginning and uh, look what changes or define your own rules. Um, yeah, maybe just give it a go. You will find the codes um, probably in a gist. And I want to thank my patrons on Patreon again so especially to those three listed here because they spend more than four dollars per month and um, they support my blog and these videos so if you find them useful in any way and please consider subscribing here on youtube and uh, if you watch more often or check out a lot of blog posts maybe you want to consider um, paying me some money Thanks in advance for that, and see you next time. Okay, yeah, um, when I checked out the video again, um, I found that, or I remembered that there's something like a complex conjugate, so um, we want exactly the minus here, so we can just use the complex conjugate. And the other one which I wanted to explain as well, was why we need this one and this is just where this value is defined so um, 